Hello and welcome back. So today I thought I would answer your questions and take you through the summer internship process with my tips for each stage. If you are interested in finance, you might have heard of a thing called a spring week. Don't worry if you haven't, because I hadn't heard of it before I went to uni, but it's typically a week long program that you'll do with a company over the Easter break and it will be unpaid. However, at the end of the week, you'll get the opportunity to have an interview, which might then give you a summer internship. Because I didn't do a spring week, I didn't have that luxury to have a secured summer internship this year. So I had quite a lengthy process. I mean, the applications for spring week are also quite lengthy, but the summit internship is just a little bit, just a, a, a minor step above that. So I thought I'd show you a list of the places that I did apply to. I've got some funny stories on a few of them, but it's basically just to kind of show you the breadth on offer as well as the high rejection rates. So I applied to Bank of America Merrill Lynch for trading and I passed the interview stage and only found out about my rejection two weeks ago. I applied to Deloitte for business tax and I got that. I also applied to PwC for business tax and I got rejected at the simulation. I applied generally to LCP and then I went into their DC pension scheme but then because of Covid uh, that was just stopped but they have opened their grad roles earlier this year, so it's okay. I applied to be a Dior digital intern and I got the case, but then it turned out that it was a year long internship with a starting salary of 18,000. So I had to reject that because that was entirely my fault. I applied to Rothschilds for global advisory and I sent in my CV. I did my competency questions and then I was failed at the psychometric test. I applied to Barclays for marketing and I did the situational test and then I did an online interview and then I was rejected. And finally, I applied to Google for their marketing in London, but due to COVID, this has just nothing, has nothing. COVID. So of course the one I can speak the most about is Deloitte, but they basically all use the same kind of higher view technology. It's basically an online interview software where they can ask you competency questions and kind of put you in a situation you have to answer back. But let's backtrack a little bit, take you back to the first step. So choosing where to apply to. So one of the most commonly asked questions and fair enough uh, when it came to this was about money and how to find out kind of the starting salaries and what places to apply for. All I'm going to say is that Glassdoor is where you can check out graduate incomes. So you will find a graduate annual income and from that you'll be able to calculate depending on how many weeks the internship is often for your internship salary. On average internships range from six to ten weeks so you can check out companies online but I would highly recommend that you do check them out in person via things like Insight Days. Now you can apply to go to Insight Days via the bank's careers portal often or through your own university's portal so king's has careers connect and similarly uh, companies like seo and bright network you can apply to go to insight days through those websites as well so for example one of the insight days that i went to was for mg prudential on the 14th of october 2019 this was really good because it kind of focused on females so this was the woman in hedge fund insight day and they gave us a little time schedule of what we've been doing and also more importantly at the back they gave a list of all the names of all the people that would be at the networking lunch this sheet was really useful not only because I'm terrible at names but because before I went up to a person I could see on their badge their name and I would know their role so I could ask them specific questions um, and then after the event I could use that sheet to add them on LinkedIn send them a message saying thank you so much for your help um, and similarly you can also add other students there. I also found out a lot that day about fund management and responsible investment so it helped me because I knew the subject more when I was applying through the application and I could also say that I went to this event. Another way that you can meet these people in person is through university fairs. So often banks will come to universities and they will just be there for maybe a lunch or an afternoon or something. You can speak to the employees about the culture, about the daily life, about teamwork. It is often very busy and students are often asking the same kind of thing but maybe finish on things like could I add you on LinkedIn or don't be annoying but just be like oh yeah no that was really helpful if I was to message you about this would you mind often they'll always say yeah of course you can um, because in a way that is their job they're trying to recruit you so don't be afraid to ask 
So once you've picked the companies you want to work for, it's time to start applying. Now, this is when I would highly recommend that you keep track of all of the companies that you apply to. So my friend applied to 40 different companies um, and she did it on an Excel spreadsheet. I didn't do that because I know that all the red rejections would really stress me out. I basically kept all of my information on sticky notes with all of the different roles and like how far I got up to before I got rejected. So the first stage is often to submit your CV. Now, make it personal. And through that, I used my sticky notes. I have copied the description of the role and I have highlighted all of the key terms like good communication skills, creativity, presence, teamwork, numeracy. And what I do is I tailor my CV to that description. So I'm using the relevant experiences that I have and just kind of making them fit the key skills that they want from an intern. There are also loads of CV workshops out there. So Bright Network has one. You can often ask your careers advisor. They will gladly go through your CV and help fix it up for you. So stage two is often verbal reasoning and critical thinking. CAP does really good online practice tests and what I did is I basically just googled free psychometric tests and did them all. Not even joking, I did them all. There are some that you have to pay for but like they're really expensive so I just did all the free ones that I could. And I, I didn't do too bad. I will put on the screen um, my answers. Of course, I didn't I didn't do great in all of them, but it was just practice. Imagine if I hadn't practiced, how bad these would have been. They are so hard, so don't put yourself down like at the start. It is really, really hard. My brain can do numbers and shapes, but words and letters, like they just, blend dyslexia. <laughs> so once you've passed that round you'll most likely be invited to an interview and this is when the higher view comes in. I would highly recommend that you have a pad of paper and a pen right next to you because what I did is I would write down the names of the people and their roles as they kind of explained the situation. So when they ask you what are you going to do when this on this goes wrong because that's often a question they ask you, you can go I'm gonna ask Jane how she feels about blah, blah, blah. And you're having to speak back to the camera. So Higher View has practice rounds that you can do before you actually press play, which is really good. Would 100% recommend that you do them. You can even stick eyes. I've, I know some people stick eyes by the camera to make it look like they're speaking to someone. Luckily, because of YouTube, it's just that I'm kind of used to speaking to a camera, but you can also use the function to turn off the screen. So you know when you FaceTime someone and you kind of get distracted by looking at yourself, you can turn that off. So once you've passed your situational interview they might ask for an in-person interview at an AC an assessment center or they might ask just for an online interview which is what I had because that was the start of the breakout of COVID-19. Preparation is key so use what you've learned from the previous stages so by this point Deloitte had sent me quite a big pack of all my weaknesses and strengths and so I knew that they were going to ask me on this just to kind of show that I can improve my weaknesses and turn them into strengths and it kind of shows that you're self-aware of your weaknesses. If you haven't heard of the STAR method then I would highly recommend that you google it. They will teach you this at any insight day that you have with the recruiters. It's basically how you can tell the interviewer a situation and always end with the result. So either that was I got a first or I got a medal for this or something it always ends with something positive so how you overcame a situation your setup is important so what I did is I sat here right here on my floor and I used my whiteboard pieces of paper behind my back I stuck them against my mirror because that was the only plain white background I had as much as I love these fairy lights they aren't really the professional look that many banks are going for I mean it's really aesthetic for this video but I don't think they would have appreciated that. So what I did is I put my computer on my chair on something stable at face height and then I used these. So these are little post-it notes with just reminders of things like grade eight singing, code first course, head girl, academic scholarship, basically examples so that when they ask you competency questions because they will I have them directly in front of me so I don't have to think about it I know that I'm prepared there are four main things that you should prepare so the company you the business environment and a question so the company why do you want to work there why that division why are you suited to that role about you common questions are tell me a time when you overcame hardship tell me a time you worked in a group what are you most proud of that kind of thing the business environment so this encapsulates things that have happened in the news so financial times the ft is perfect for this if you are a king's business student you do get free access to this and i think some other universities do that as well basically just google things about business tax 2020 covid brexit oil 
and then see how it's going to affect your industry. Another way to find out this kind of information is to also check their website and also their blogs, their Twitters, if they've got a podcast. So LCP have a podcast. So I was listening to that the night before my interview being like, I need to know all of the information about DC pensions. That was really helpful. When it comes to questions, always have one ready. It's just common practice that you have one ready. So whether it's like, what is the next step? Or what's your greatest achievement been at the company? Which not only shows that you're interested in them, but you're also interested in career progression and things like that. That's a good question that I always ask. In my notes I just have always prepare in capital locks because there was one time that I asked um, if I needed to prep for a summer school interview. She told me no and then proceeded to ask me all of the competency questions. I then answered about how I popped my driving instructor's tyre um, but then happened to pass my driving test first time but she was like that is the First time I've ever heard that story. I did get the role. I think it also helped with the fact that I used the STAR method. So with the result being that I learnt from that big mistake and then I passed first time, which is good. And then I thought I'd end this video on just some quick tips. So number one, don't be afraid to say that you don't know. So if they ask you a question like, what would you do in this situation? If you're not sure, just say, I'm not entirely sure, but do correct me if I'm wrong. I think that blah, blah, blah. it's better to admit that you're not entirely sure rather than waffling on about something that you have no clue about and you're just kind of waiting to hear if they nod or don't nod. Dress smart, mention if you've gone to any insight days and make sure that there's no background noise for the interview. If you're interested in what happened to the Deloitte internship because of COVID, it has been turned into a four week mentoring scheme. Everything is virtual. All of my friends who have internships there are all virtual as well. I'll leave a link to the news article down below if you want to read more about it. On a positive note, they did fast track us to the last stage of the grad scheme application. So that maybe reduces some pressure. If you've got any further internship questions or any success stories, I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. If you found the video helpful, please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for weekly videos on this channel and I'll see you next week. Have a lovely day. Bye.